Hey guys, it's Steve from Featherlight Studio. This series is all about how to learn Cubase fast. So both Cubase and Steinberg sites have some killer tutorials, lots of in-depth information, but sometimes you just need stuff really fast. So this series starts from the very beginning and takes you all the way up to advanced recording techniques. You can jump in anywhere you want, or you can start in the beginning with us. So welcome to Cubase. Let's get to work. All right, so the first things we wanna do is make all the connections to the computer, and we're gonna leave all the hardware powered off for the time being. Trust me on this, it'll save you a ton of headache in the future. So let's make the audio connections to our audio interface, and let's plug in all of the interface connections. So whether it's uh, you know newer Thunderbolt or newer USB-C, or it's regular USB, or even older Firewire, let's make those connections now. And then the MIDI hardware is almost always USB, so if you have a USB keyboard, for example, or a drum controller or a pad controller, let's make those connections now. But one quick note about that, if you're plugging USB connections in, try to plug them into a primary USB port on the computer itself and not a hub. Hubs use proprietary power saving software and it always wreaks havoc on audio and MIDI hardware. So try to plug it into a primary uh, port and not a, a hub. All right, so the next most important thing is installing all the drivers and software. I cannot stress this enough and not for the reasons you think. Almost all modern day audio interfaces come with some kind of mix console software, and that allows you to use all of its advanced features. And there's lots. For example, you can set up all kinds of different monitor and headphone cues. It might come with effects, like for example, reverb and compression, for example. Um, low latency drivers that the regular OS won't use. There's lots of stuff in there that you want to take advantage of. You want to take advantage of all the power that that has to offer. All right, so next thing we want to do is power all of our devices on and let the computer recognize the devices. You might need a restart, um, so give yourself time to do that. And then we want to plug in a microphone into the channel uh, or a keyboard if you don't have a mic input and just test the inputs because we're going to need those for recording later. So we want to make sure that the signal going into it isn't so hot it's going to clip the input into the red, but we also don't want it so low that it's really noisy. All right, so next video, we're going to start it up and get Cubase talking to our hardware. We'll see you in the next video.